Hey guys! So this morning I'm going to share with you my music practice. So um, I've been practicing my ukulele and I'm getting pretty good at some songs and I know that there's nothing that helps you get better like playing in front of other people because that's where your mistakes really get to show up. So in this video I am just going to sing some songs that I've been working on. So many of you know that I go to the Kirtan at Karuna every, almost every Sunday. And I've been stepping up more since, since Luke left for India. Normally he's, uh, good morning everyone, happy Saturday. Normally he's sort of like the leader, sort of like the pillar that holds the whole thing up. And so since he left to India, it's been an invitation to the rest of us to really like step up and take more of a, a leadership role. So, so I've been doing that. Um, I've been practicing a lot, almost pretty much every morning, pretty much every day, which turns out the key to getting better at something is practicing. Who would, who would have thought? It's crazy. It's crazy. So in this video, I'm going to share with you my practice. So good morning, guys. So feel free to grab a cup of tea, hang out. Maybe if there's something you want to do around the house, and just put it, put, put this music on in the background, and I'll just keep you company on this fine Saturday morning. Hi, Bryce. And yes, I'm in my pajamas. Stella is over there sleeping on the couch. <clears throat> Hi everyone. Hi Christine. Good morning everyone. <clears throat> Alright, here's one that I'm working on right now. Oh, it's different when people are in front of you. <clears throat> Hurry on. Call on the light, call on the light 
Mm. I just learned that one yesterday. Hi, Carrie. Hi, honey. I just learned that one yesterday. Um, so since since Luke left, um, I was a little like, oh no, how are we gonna do Kirtan without Luke? And like, I don't, I want to learn, I want to like, I want to get better. Like, so we put together this practice group. So uh, every Friday now we meet up for a couple hours and we share songs. And it's crazy. Like I'm holding the space and I'm, I'm kind of like leading it, but but I'm I'm new here. Like I'm so new. So it's great. I I'm learning songs. I'm sharing songs. So every week I, I learn new songs and I practice during the week and then share it at Kirtan and um, it's very different to practice alone versus in front of people which is why you guys are helping me so much right now by giving me the chance to play in front of others which brings up a lot more like the brain does different things so I'll play another one for you that I'm working on. So in Kirtan um, this is traditionally sort of like an ancient Indian practice. It's kind of part of like the yoga tradition. There's a kind of yoga. You know, there are different kinds of yoga. There's karma yoga. Karma yoga is when you're in service, right? Um, anyways, bhakti yoga is a kind of yoga which is like devotional singing. It's singing to God. It's singing to the divine, right? So that's what we're doing when we do the kirtan and karuna. A lot of times people are like, I don't understand the words. It's because it's an ancient language called Sanskrit. You've probably heard of Sanskrit, even though you don't know how to speak it. It's a very, it's the oldest language in the world. And so these, these mantras, these words that we're singing, they are very old vibrations, very old frequencies, which have these intentions of, of reaching out and invoking these different elements of the divine, you know? So, um, so the one that I want to play now is called, is to, is invoking um, Kali. Kali and Durga, it's kind of like the same, kind of like the different sides of the same coin. Uh, interesting thing, so Durga, so Kali is, in, in, in Hindu tradition, she is this sort of like crazy looking kind of blue goddess with this, with this ring of skulls around her neck, which looks pretty, pretty dark, but those are actually demon skulls, so she's, she's slaying demons, right? She's got multiple arms, she's a badass woman who is like slaying the dark forces, right? So when we invoke her, we're invoking this energy, this, this powerful feminine energy to, to slay the demons. And then Durga, the other aspect of this is this goddess riding the tiger, right? So imagine riding a tiger. You need to be a pretty strong person to ride a tiger because you have to master it. It's this great power. You know, you're riding this great power. If you fall off, it can kill you, right? In fact, the funny thing, that I relate about this is that when I started my travels, when I did my first six month journey to India, which is why I started making videos online to document that journey. If you go back to my old YouTube channel, you can see those old videos. I met with a psychic in Salem, Massachusetts. We did a session because I was, you know, I was confused and, you know, what am I getting myself into? What's happening? Why am I being called to India? This is crazy. Why? Like, why? Why? I was looking for answers, right? And uh, she said, she said, this journey that you're on, it's a journey of discernment. You're really learning. It's really a journey to learn about yourself. And she said, your journey is like riding a tiger. It's funny, I didn't know then that Durga was like the image of this woman riding a tiger. But it's like, you know, when you ride a tiger, the tiger will take you places, right? It's this great power, but you have to master it or it can destroy you. So, <clears throat> so we're going to sing a song now to Kali. So it goes... It just, just goes like this, okay? You guys ready?
And I don't mean like uncomfortable, like, like your leg is being sawed off. I mean uncomfortable, like you're pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone. You're like, ah, I'm not used to doing this. This doesn't feel right. Like normally that space where, you know, you might be, you might stay, oh, I want to just stay here and ah, I'm not going to go there. It's too scary and I'm cold and I'm going to wait till I get a better ukulele or I'm going to wait till the situation is better. Then I'm going to go out there. And yet when we step across that threshold, that's when we stand to grow the most. So, <sighs> um, so what's that, what's that line for you? With what you're learning, with what you're doing in your life. Maybe it's like speaking, speaking your truth, right? Maybe it's uncomfortable for you to speak your truth. And so just taking those, those tiny steps. Nice, Allie, that's great, that's great. A group of friends get together every Thursday evening for intimate kirtan on the stairs. That's so great, you know. So I've been making kirtan and singing and meeting up with people to sing more of my more part of my life right now. And I'm, I'm really amazed because I used to get together with people to smoke weed and drink beer and complain about life. And now I'm getting together with people to be like joyful and sing. So it's just like, it's a, you, you find the be most beautiful people in these like song circles, like people who, who, who want to sing and be joyful. Like those are the people to hang out with. 
not the people who just want to drink beer and get high and complain and, I don't know, shoot things and destroy things and do things to put other people down so they can feel powerful. You know, it's, it's, it's a different kind of dynamic. So let's see. Let's see what else I got for you. <clears throat> oh, my, my, my Asatoma song changed. Oh, here's one I've been working on. So, so um, <clears throat> this is Om Namo Amitabhaya. And essentially this, the translate is, translation is we are entering into the eternal light into the limitless light. So this is the light that transcends all boundaries. It goes beyond nations, religions, traditions, points of view. Um, it's an all-inclusive, divine, spiritual light that's available to everyone. And so in this song, we're essentially saying, I turn towards this light. I turn towards this light. And the benefits, so there are benefits of singing these mantras. Um, it attunes you to a certain frequency. So the benefit of this one is that it attunes you to living a more peaceful and joyful life here, here in the now. And then the idea is that you will, by tuning to these frequencies, be reborn in the next life into a pure land of eternal bliss. Sounds good to me. I don't know where they get it, but sign me up. Sign me up for the pure land of eternal bliss. So also in this, in this um, so Amitabhaya is the Buddha of compassion. So there are different Buddhas. This is the Buddha of compassion. So we're saying praise to the Buddha of compassion. Praise to compassion. And then we also mention the word Buddha, Dharma, and Sangaya. So Buddha. So then we say praise to the Buddha. Praise to the teacher within us all. The Buddha that we have within us all. And then Dharma is, is, is the path. Is the path of light. It's the path of, of the thing that feels right. It's the path of you using your gifts to make a difference in the world. It's, 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 it's what... It's your highest alignment, right? So, so we're saying, praise to the teacher within. Praise to compassion. Praise to the teacher within. Praise to the path. And the last one is praise to the, sang the, the Sangha, which is the spiritual community. So Karuna is a Sangha. It's a spiritual community, right? So, <clears throat> so let me, uh, let's, let's go.
I've been encouraged to notice what is my response when something ends, when the song ends. Can I sit in the silence or do I rush to fill the silence? I was called out, I was actually was called out during a poetry session at Karuna when uh, the poem ended, someone's poem ended, and immediately I was like, oh, great job, great job, great job, right? I immediately went to approve of the person. Instead of sitting in that vibration of the art, of the, of the frequency that was just shared, instead of just enjoying it, I ran to fill it with something. So that's something that I'm working on, is learning to enjoy the music after the music. So what could that mean for you? Where do you notice that? Maybe if you're sitting and talking with somebody, you're in a conversation with somebody, if there's ever like a pause and like you don't know what to say, and there's this like silence, and maybe it's like an awkward silence between you two, how does that feel for you? What do you do? Where does your mind go? Do you try to like fix it, make small talk, compliment them, change the subject to something else very quickly? And it's like, I feel like that's part of the key of like real intimacy between people is being able to sit in that silence with another human being and really just like be with them without to, without needing to like change anything, just being. And I feel like that's so much the key of like living a peaceful life is being able to be with what is, to be with the frequency, to be with the song, to be with the silence, to be with the other person, to be able to look deeply in their eyes without without shying away, without getting nervous, without, you know, so. Uh, wait, let me see if there's any. <clears throat> Ooh, I got one. No, I don't really want to do. Okay, we'll do this one.
Notice if you're holding any tension anywhere in your body right now. Notice if one side of your body is more tense than the other. I know for me, sometimes I tense up my right side, which is my masculine side. So my practice is also to come back and to notice, how am I doing right now? How am I, how am I right now? Am I tense? Am I stressing out? Am I anxious? And can I invite myself to relax? Can I invite myself to remember that it's okay? Can I invite myself to remember that I'm exactly where I'm meant to be? Learning exactly what I'm meant to learn. I'm as good or as bad as I'm meant to be, and it's okay. Most important thing is that I keep going. Many of you have seen my journey with music. I saw someone just said it sounded like I'm a pro. Wow. Before people were commenting, telling me how I sounded like shit. I was commenting about how I sounded like shit. There's a video. My shitty song. Look it up. So I got a great piece of advice. I said this recently. During the natural building course, I was staying over at the Bamboo Hotel. And I was sharing the room with a really beautiful man named Matthew. Kanika and Matthew we were sharing the room together. And Matthew would play these beautiful songs on the guitar, the beautiful devotional songs. He'd be up at sunrise, and he would play these beautiful melodies with these beautiful words, and I, I remember just being so impressed by him, and I, was, I went and I said, Matthew, you are so good. You must have been born this way. I'm so impressed. Wow. And I just confidently him, hum, and you can see the way he like kind of just like received it. He said, you know what, that means a lot to hear because... I was really bad. I felt really, really bad. It wasn't working. I wasn't a very good singer. I wasn't a very good guitar. Um, and he said, uh, this, is, this is the secret, he said, but I kept going. I kept going. And that's why I'm here today, and here you are standing before me, saying how good you think I am, how great my songs are. And he's just, you know, like, thank you. Because he knows it's, it's only a function of the fact that he kept going. So. I know many of you, thank you Joe, thanks for the stars honey. Um, I know many of you are learning something new. Maybe it's a diet, maybe you're learning to change how you eat. Maybe you are learning to change how you speak to yourself in a more loving way. Maybe you're learning how to be in relationship with people in a new way. Maybe you're learning guitar. When we're learning something new, we're not gonna be good at it at the beginning. Like the great, greatest artists, they, they didn't, maybe maybe a few of them, the, the very, 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 very minority very, were very good when they started, but the majority of people, they weren't good when they started. Notice if you have tension. But the greatest ones kept going. So I've been practicing a lot. I've, I've, I've already, this is um, almost now, in 15 minutes, it'll be two hours that I've been playing music this morning, starting with some vocal warm-ups. I took a class with an opera singer. She taught me these vocal warm-ups. Also, also like activating like chakra, like opening the chakra kind of frequency sounds. So I've been doing a lot of practice, a lot of work to you know, open myself energetically. And so now, and practicing the ukulele, getting better at the chords. And so there's a lot to be said about practicing. Which is funny because I resisted practicing all my life. Remember when I was a kid, I played piano, but I stopped. I hated it. I hated that my parents forced me to practice. And yet that was the key all along. So.
actually, I'm, I'm, so I have a, the Kirtan song circle and then the women's medicine song circle, so I haven't really learned any plant medicine songs yet, but I'm on that, I'm on that um, trajectory. Um, so for the ukulele, um, who got the ukulele? Go back and see. Robin, you got the ukulele. Good for you, honey. Go be bad. Watch YouTube videos. Practice. That's the key, is just do it. Be bad. Practice. And have fun. Have fun with it. It's just, you know, it's like a few chords. Okay, you got your C chord. You got your G chord. You got your F chord. You got your A chord. You got your D chord. And your D minor. You got your G minor. And your E minor. <laughs> Let's go back to that first song. So also, one thing that's important to note is that when you practice a song, or when you practice anything, when you practice the new habit, when you practice the new way of taking care of yourself, or relating to others, or saying no to someone, you know, it, it, it's, it's a really weak kind of, um, it's a really weak kind of neural passageway in your brain, right? So, so our brain travels along pathways, right? And so when we have a deeply ingrained way of being, a deeply ingrained habit, that literally means that your brain can very easily just do that thing. So when we're changing, we have all this like inertia to get over, right? So first we have to get out of that trench, right? You have to climb out of that trench, and then you have to start digging a new pathway. So every time you do the action, that pathway gets a little bit deeper, which is why we have to come back again and again. We have to practice saying, we have to keep practice saying no to the abusive person. We have to keep practice saying yes to ourselves, even though the old programming wants to send a, a tidal wave of shame and guilt over us for trying to change our ways, right? So it takes a lot of energy to get your new groove, right? To, to get that new groove, but then once you're in it and you dug it deep, then it becomes easier and easier. It's just, it's just that first time, that first time that you're changing that's when it's the hardest. That's when, you know, we need the most support, which is why, like, you know, for someone overcoming an addiction, getting into a 12-step program, you're surrounded by a community of support to help you forge the new path, right? I mean, that's how I do it. Bye, Terry. Love you. Great. Allie, you love, you got one as well. Good. So I like to use, to tune my ukulele, an app called, um, let me show you this. It's called Guitar, Gituno. Oh, see? And then I just get my little... And then it tells you you can tune it. So I like that one. And then, you know, I've been... I search ukulele tutorials on, on YouTube, like, easy strumming patterns for beginners. Right? Oh, Guadalupe! Your, your church is forming a ukulele group and you're encouraged to pick up the instrument. Honey, Guadalupe, one thing I can tell you is that if you want to bring some extra energy to your devotional spiritual practice. Starting to open your voice and play an instrument and ukulele, it's like, takes it to the next level. Um, so, so yeah, you know, and then little by little. Oh, here's another one. When I was sick, when I was with the parasites and I was just kind of bedridden a lot, I, um, <clears throat> I practiced this one.
go back. We'll end with the start, the song that we started with. Let me see if I can remember the tune. Sometimes you learn it, and it's like, I don't know, the tune has a life of its own. And the tunes that come out of you have a life of their own. Hurry up. two hours so I think it's time to get to my actual yoga and meditation practice it's funny uh, since this opening uh, I've really just been kind of replacing my morning routine with music and in a way that is it is a way that I'm connecting with spirit connecting with divine aligning myself you know kind of clearing clearing any kind of residue within me you know you can sing it out in fact one of my therapy I went with a uh, therapist uh, Bhatia She's the wife of my Ayurveda coach, and she does this vocal therapy. She's a trained psychotherapist, and so she would do these sessions where she has you, you know, what's going on? What's 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 bothering you? What's on your heart? Like, what's what's the issue? You know, and she would thank you, Rosemary. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, guys. And she would get to find the core. Where's the core wound? Where's the core wound? And then she would invite you to start singing to it. So she would start playing this musical instrument. 
give you kind of some background and then she would invite you to sing to it. So I got to sing. I got to sing the pain of the little girl who was told she couldn't sing. I got to sing out the pain that I've been holding inside of, you know, the trauma that I had growing up. I got to find those pain points and then actually use my own voice to move them out. So our, our voice, our voice can be a tool, a tool, a vibrational tool for us to work with our own healing, you know? So, and the interesting thing about when we start working with the throat chakra and really opening it, and this is what I noticed, actually after my, my last ayahuasca ceremony, I had this big vocal opening. I was singing so much the, during the ceremony. I was, I was singing so much, I was singing too much. At one point, one of the, the space holders came and said, hey, you know, can you just wait, wait till the open sharing circle? I, I was confused. I thought, well, anyways. But after that session, after I had that big vocal opening, I came out of that ceremony and I noticed that suddenly I was able, that I, there had been, I had wanted to make amends with this girl. I had, I had, there had just been a, a, um, a conflict between us and I had been holding that conflict inside of me. And anytime I wanted to go talk to her about it, I was too scared and I wasn't able to do it. I just kind of let the moment pass by. But after that ceremony, when I had this big vocal opening, when my voice and my singing was coming up, like, unlike anything I'd ever heard or experienced. Afterwards, I found that I was able to then go directly to that girl and be like, hey, can I talk to you? And I was able to speak my truth to her so clearly. And then later on that week, I was able to address an issue with my landlord that I've been kind of like holding on and kind of like, you know, kind of holding within. I was scared to approach her. So all of these, I noticed that these places where I was afraid to express myself, to speak my truth, suddenly there was a new space that was open as I had done this work to open my, my singing, my throat chakra. So, so it's great. It's a worthy, it's, a, it's not just about singing. It's about something much deeper. Mm. I call all the light within. I call all the light within. I call on the light. I call on the light. I call on the light within. Arion, dear Lord, Satnam, holy names, when I call on the light within, I go home. So call on the light, call on the light, call on the light within. So call on the light, you can call on the light, will you call on the light within? Arion, dear Lord, Satnam. Holy names, when I call on the light within, I go home. Love you guys. Happy Saturday. We will do a check-in with the puppies soon because they are coming over the edge. They are big. Oh, hi, St. Ellen. Um, they are big. They are playful. They are puppies. They are puppies. Puppies. Wow. So we'll do that a little later. I got to do my actual yoga practice now although this was a kind of yoga so I saw someone say thank you Guadalupe I saw someone say I'm looking very energetic today because I've been literally working with these divine frequencies all morning it's crazy what it does to you so it's a natural high man I'm finding new ways to get to altered states all like higher more expressed open states without needing drugs or alcohol to get me there it's great it's great it's possible Awesome. Mm. Thanks, Connie. I love you too, honey. All right, guys. Have a beautiful Saturday. I'll see you guys soon. Whatever you do, enjoy it. And just remember, when, we, when we're starting a new habit, a new practice, a new way of living, of speaking, of relating, of singing, of playing, of whatever, whatever it is for you, you're going to have times where you're bad, and it's okay. Just keep going. That's the secret. Just keep going. All right. Love you guys. And of course, because everyone wants to know. Come on. There's Stella. Love you guys.